If you're starting to get sick of me, don't worry, me too. You know how brutal it is to edit yourself and listen to your own voice continually for what, 18 days straight? Brutal. If you're getting sick of me, block me for a little bit and then maybe come back next January because I'm sick of me too. Today I'm going to be ranking the books that I rated four and five stars last year because I wasn't really on booktube or making booktube type videos. I think I had just gotten into posting about my books on Instagram at the end of last year. So I never did a tier ranking video for my reads for 2022. I read 115 books last year and I rated 36 books at least four or five stars. There probably was a few more that I missed. I was really bad about using Goodreads last year, but these are the ones we're going to include today. For the tiers, the first tier is five damn stars. It's, it really is a five star book, or it's a five star book to me, okay? Second is a fantastic book. So this is a book that's probably sitting around four still, maybe four and a half stars. Third tier is more like 3.5 stars now that I'm thinking about it. Maybe even kind of a three star book, but I'm generous, so three and a half stars. And then the last is, my taste is just very different now. If I would read this book nowadays, I would probably DNF it because as you can tell by looking at this I found book talk last year I um, Didn't know it existed until I saw one of Eamon's videos at the beginning of last year And I was like, oh my god, there are there are people who read there are others And what should I read and then I got like heavily deep into book talk again as you can tell I'm pretty sure almost every single one of these are either recommendations from book talk or just random recommendations from Kindle Unlimited. Let's start with Archer's Voice. Archer's Voice still to this day is one of my favorite books. It's kind of my baby. I'm still gonna give it five damn stars. That was the first book that I had read because I didn't really read in college. That was the first book I read post like college and taking a four year break from reading that made me cry. Like I had a visceral reaction to a certain part of this book and if you have read this book and you know what I'm talking about it gutted me from the inside out for a second there and I was like <gasps> like I was uncontrollably sobbing five damn stars flock by Kate Stewart okay so I have I think I have the entire series on here I do there's flock exodus and the finish line I'm just gonna do flock first I think I rated Flock four stars, and I'm gonna put Flock, we're gonna do Fantastic Book. I really do enjoy this series. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of them as well. Exodus and the Finish Line. Exodus is the second one. Fantastic Book. I'm trying to remember if I liked Exodus or if I liked the Finish Line better. I'm gonna put the Finish Line in five damn stars. But Exodus and the Finish Line might actually be flip-flopped, but I can't remember which one I enjoyed better. But I know one of those I was like, well, I was gutted in, in Exodus, I can tell you that. But the Finish Line, I think, did something to me too. I need to reread this series so bad. Eee! Things we never got over. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I know. Buy a Thread by Lucy Scorn. I think if I read this book nowadays, I would probably give it three and a half stars. I believe I gave it four and a half. My quirk with Lucy score now and like with my book taste being what it is now is her books seem very, very, very long to me at the stage that I'm in and reading. Whereas I really appreciated the length of them a year ago and I ate it up. I feel like there's this weird shift and I might come back around, but at the moment I'm not loving overly long books. But last year, overly long books were my shit like add 800 pages of a romance novel and I will love it now mm, it's only like 600 pages but it's still pretty long I'd probably give it three and a half stars if I read it right now twisted games five damn stars five damn stars from Luke off with love fantastic book I actually want to do a Marianne as a pot of reread sometime here soon because she's the queen of slow burn and I I miss the rage I do. Rock Bottom Girl. This is also by Lucy Score. I'm also going to put this one in the 3.5. I gave this book four stars, but I do feel the same way about this book as I do by a thread. I think I would bump it down to 3.5. Ugly Love. 
Um, I also went through my Colleen Hoover phase last year. Turns out we're from the same hometown. That's kind of crazy. That was crazy. I found that out and then I was like, who is this lady? Then I started reading her books and I was like, oh my god, wait, she's actually really popular. And here we are today. I think if I read Ugly Love nowadays, I would probably, like, I would say my taste is very different. I do have a couple other Coho books on here, Verity and It Ends With Us. I'm gonna go ahead and do those. Verity, I genuinely think, look, I fuck with Verity. I think I would to this day. I, I think I, I, I kind of fuck with Verity. I think I would still like it and consider it a good book. It ends with us. I do, I do think my taste is very different now, and I'm glad I enjoyed Ugly Love and It Ends with Us, the beginning of last year. But I don't think I would enjoy them right now. Verity, again, I kind of fuck with her. A False Start by Elsie Silver. I also have a photo finish on here. Off to the races and the front runner. Okay, wait, which is the last one? I think a false start was five damn stars. I believe a false start was Griffin and I don't remember the FMC's name, but it was an age gap brother's best friend romance. Ah, it was so good. It was so good. This is the series that got me into Elsie Silver last year. A photo finish, I'm gonna put it in fantastic book. That's the second book in the series. I do know that. Off to the Races is the first book. I think I'm gonna give that one 3.5 stars. It wasn't my favorite, but I did have fun reading it. But And the Front Runner, which one is that about? Ooh, I think I'm gonna give that one fantastic book. I really like that one. In this one, again, I can't remember their names. I do know the MMC stands up to the FMC's family when they're kind of like bitching at her and he's like, do not speak to her that way. <laughs> I'm sorry. Twisted Lies, five damn stars. Twisted Games and Twisted Lies does something to me. I need to do a reread. Garnet Flats, this is the one book of Debney Perry that I really fuck with. I don't know what it, what it is about this book. It was second chance romance and kind of like enemies-esque to lovers because of the second chance there. I think I'm gonna have to give it five damn stars. This is the one book or, or of Debney Perry's where I'm like, good God, what did you put in this? Cause I ate it up. And this book has horrific reviews, horrific reviews. And anytime I talk to anybody about it, they're like, I kind of hated it. You know what? I liked it. Sue me. Love Light Farms. I'm gonna put her in fantastic books. This is one of my favorite holiday romances, and this is my first book by B.K. Borison. My favorite in this Interconnected series. I haven't finished the Interconnected series though. I probably should get on that soon. Do I own them? Oh no, I own the first two, because those are the only two that I've read. I really liked Love Light Farms. It's a friends to lovers holiday romance, and the FMC owns a Christmas tree farm, and it's just very festive and wholesome, and I had a lot of fun with it. I also love friends to lovers though. Beach Read. My taste is very different now. Could you imagine? The more I think about re Beach Read, the more I'm like, holy shit. Highball Rush. This is the sixth book in the Bootleg Spring series by Claire Kingsley and Lucy Score. It's a very fun small town rom-com series. Very mindless read, free on Kindle Unlimited. This is the last book in it. The thing I really liked about this series was alongside the romance in each interconnected book because it focuses on two different characters in each of the six books alongside the romance there's kind of like a murderer missing person mystery going on loved it the sixth book how it tied it all together i devoured this book devoured it it was so good to me i think i might put it i'm gonna put it in fantastic i think i gave it four and a half stars so i don't know if it's quite a five star read for me but it was a good, it was a good book. Colty by Mariana Zapata. Um, you know, just five damn stars. That book just took a piece of my soul. Forever Never by Lucy Score. I think I'm gonna give this one fantastic book. This one is really long. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in fantastic book. But it could very easily be a little bit too long like these other two Lucy Score books down here. But I'm gonna leave it there. It was a good book. And I'm really digging the cover at the moment, so that's kind of weighing into my my opinion. The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. You know, I originally rated this book four stars, and the more I think about it, I I'm gonna have to give it five stars. 
I, I came to that decision this past summer because if I'm continually thinking about a book, remembering the characters, remembering the scenes, and just like feeling so much joy when I think about it, I'm gonna bump it up to five stars. Good Girl, Bad Blood. This is the second book in the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I'm gonna go ahead and move A Good Girl's Guide to Murder over here. I did not like the third book in this series. Very unpopular opinion. I thought, I don't even remember exactly what I thought, but I did DNF the third book. The first and the second book, loved them. Loved them. I'm gonna put them both in Fantastic Book. I ate them up. Very, very fun reads for like, if you like YA. Maybe I should give the third book a shot. It's it's over there. Maybe one of these days I'll give the third book a shot. I don't remember exactly why I DNF'd it. Oh, the girl started turn. I can't say that out loud. If you've read it, you might know. I thought it was a little out of left field, but also not out of left field. I don't know. Wasn't working for me. Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. Why did I only include two of them on here? Because I know for a fact I rated Broken Vow four and a half stars. Okay, Pretend Broken Vow by Sophie Lark is on here. That would go in Fantastic Book. Bloody Heart. I think about Bloody Heart so much. Should I give it five damn stars? I think, I'm, I think I'm gonna give it five damn stars. That's another book where I think about it so often that I just, you know, mm, Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. We're gonna put it in fantastic books. Same with Brutal Prince. Flawless by Elsie Silver. Oh, Heartless is on here too. I was like, I know I read Heartless last year. Flawless, I'm gonna give it fantastic book. I think I originally, yeah, I gave this book four stars and then Heartless over here, five damn stars. That book, Elsie, you really did something to me with that one. I read the cat and mouse duet last year. I know people's beef with the cat and mouse duet. I understand it. I personally loved it. Haunting Adeline. I think I'm going to give it fantastic book, but Hunting Adeline, I devoured Hunting Adeline. That's the second book. It made me an emotional wreck. And also I was addicted to that book. I read it so fast. All Roads Lead Here. This is another Mariana Zapata book. I'm going to put her in fantastic book. The one issue I had with All Roads Lead Here was I felt like, I don't think there was a third act breakup, but the conflict at the end of the book just felt a little silly to me. And I think I need to reread it and kind of evaluate it a little bit differently because I remember reading the third act breakup and being like, is this really a big deal? No, but maybe I missed something and maybe it was actually a bigger deal. I plan to reread it soon anyway, so it's fine. The Worst Best Man. This is another Lucy score book. I am gonna put this in 3.5 stars now that I'm thinking about it. I remember having so much fun with this book, but I genuinely think if I read it now, it would either be three and a half, three stars, or it's, it's le this one's leaning towards my taste is very different now. The trope in this book is pretty much rags and riches. I think that's what they consider the trope when like one of the characters is really poor and the other one is like a billionaire because the FMC was pretty broke and the MMC was like a billionaire and he was obsessed with her. And he was also the worst best man, if you can't tell. Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. <laughs> I don't know where to put this one. I don't even know where to put this one. I was on a high reading this series by Tessa Bailey. I remember reading this when I was camping in Utah. And I I had a friend camping next door. And I was like, listen, you're gonna, we're going to have to talk in a day. Because I have got to get through this series. <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker. I think I'm gonna give it fantastic book. I think I'm gonna put it there. It was such a fun read and I loved it. And I loved, it. what's his name, Fox? Yee, I was so in love with him. From Blood and Ash. While I DNF'd the second book in the series and will not probably pick it up again, I did really enjoy From Blood and Ash. I think I'm gonna give it fantastic book. I thought it was a great start to a fantasy series. The rest of them didn't quite work for me, but the first one, I appreciate you and I really enjoyed you. And that's it for me ranking my four and five star reads from last year. I cannot wait to do a tier ranking of all almost 200 books I've read this year. I'm sitting at 187. Oh my God, that is gonna be a long ass video. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Vlogmas day 18 and I will see you guys tomorrow. Again, if you're starting to get sick and fucking tired of me, just stop watching and come back in January, okay? Okay.